Imagine if you can just detect objects by prompting our models, then we'll get bounding boxes around it. There's also models where we can get segmentation mask. So in this video here, I'm going to show you how we can use the Ultralytics model and framework to go in and set up the YOLO world model. All we have to do is just give it a prompt and it will detect those specific objects. Let's just jump straight into it. Let's start here on the Ultralytics website. If you go inside the resources, we will open up the documentation. If you go inside the model tab, these are all the models available from Ultralytics. I'm also doing videos for them. So you can go in and check out pretty much covering every single aspect that you need to know of Ultralytics, every single small little detail and all the tabs in here. So one thing here that we can take a look at is the YOLO world model. And it's pretty much just an open vocabulary detection model where we can prompt the specific objects that we want to detect. So there's both models where we can give it a single point and then we will take that object. We can provide examples, we can provide a prompt and basically just guide the models what they want to detect. So instead of training the models end to end, we can just ask it, detect that this dog in the image, detect the guy wearing the blue jacket or something like that. And then it will actually be able to detect only those objects. So what we actually need is to take a prompt. We need to have a text encoder. We will have a YOLO back, backbone that just extracts the features from the image. Then we'll have the text encoder so we can get it into embeddings. So we'll have features or embeddings from our image. We will have vocabulary embeddings and that will be thrown into a vision language model here. And then they can go in and act like extract the context in the image and provide the bounding boxes for the exact text input that we're giving it. So real-time solution, it runs very fast. It's based on convolutional neural networks, the YOLO models. The only difference is pretty much just how we extract the text embeddings and map that into our vision space. So it's powered by YOLO V8, <clears throat> inference with offline vocabulary as well. So you can basically just prompt what you want to detect. These are the things here supported with Ultralytics. So we have the YOLO world model we have the version 2 as well which we are going to use in this video so this is zero shot transfer on the Kogo data set we're getting pretty good mean error positions without any 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 training at all this is just directly out of the box and you can also use it in just a few lines of code so let's just jump straight into my code editor here and let's see how we can use it so i have an example we're going to throw in some videos as well. We can see I have my two videos running. We have people walking around and we just have a free prompt video which we can use. So this is just an indoor environment and we have an outdoor environment with people walking. So all we have to do, let's just try this people walking video first. All we have to do is from Autolytics import yellow world. And if you want to run it, we can open up our terminal. And the only thing that I have to do is just pip install. Ultralytics, and it will set up everything that you need on your computer. Then we just create an instance of our YOLO world model. We can also go back and take the version two. So we can grab this one instead, YOLO V8, and depending on the background. So if you want to run it faster, you can take the smaller version. If you want to be more accurate, you can take the medium version and so on, but it's based on the YOLO model. So it's gonna be crazy fast. We want to show the results here. You can also hit save if you want to save a video. You just have to add it here. All different arguments can be found inside the Autolytics documentation and we have videos covering all of it. Then we get the results variable back here or our generator and we can extract all the bounding boxes, the confidence scores, everything that we need here. We can even run tracking on top of it as well. So track, if we just call track on it and we can specify the source. Another cool thing is just specify zero here that will use our webcam. So we should be able to run this one I'm just going to run the Python script, YOLO world usage.py. We're downloading the model. It can't find this video. Of course it can't find, we need the extension .mp4. Let's rerun it. And this is how we can extract the boxes. So now we're just detecting persons. It's not full real time. This is running on my CPU. It's still gonna be a bit slower compared to just using the YOLO models out of the box but there's a ton of use cases out there where you just want to prompt optics is if some specific scenario happens. It could be that you don't have enough data for it. You can just prompt it. If it detects it, you can raise some alert or trigger something or do whatever logic you want on top of your system. 
You can probably see in here that I have a new code editor that I'm testing out, which is called Coder. They have a ton of different tools here. We can go and take a look at their website as well and the documentation. They have the CLI tool. It's pretty much just an agentic coding platform for writing software. Tons of different tools available out there, but I'm testing this one here out as it has multi agents that you can spin up in parallel and it also has very good memory so how it loads in your code base handles the context and memory of the models if you go inside the documentation you can see you can just download it here it's also very good pricing to have at the top we have the cli tool just as if you're installing cloud code or whatever you can do it with npn uh, curl or homebrew let's just try this one here out let's go inside our editor all we have to do is just pre-install it's gonna set it up and we can use the CLI tool just as any other CLI tool out there. We can hook up the models that we want to use. But inside the code editor itself, when I'm working in larger code bases, they have something called Quest here. You also just have the standard agent on the right side. So here you can create a new chat. If you're using cursor, very similar interface, but the cool thing here is the multi agent. So now we saw that we can run predictions on this one here while it's installing. I'll show you another cool feature. So we have the quest. Let's start a new tab. It will open it up here. We have our chat interface. So let's build out a full application around the YOLO world model as we can use. So let's just say here, uh, I want to build out a backend system for my detection model, object detection model to handle prediction from images and also saves the results. There we go. We can now just hit go. We can add additional context. You can add images as well, but now it's going to go into a design phase, action flow, and then it will again generate a report at the end. So while it's doing that, we can go in and create a new task. So I'm also using another tool called Whisperflow just for pretty much just for translation or not translation, but uh, transcription. So I want to build out an HTML page for my front end around my update detection model so I can upload an image. It will do the scoring and predictions and I should also have an input prompt field so I can throw in the prompt there, upload the image, it will do the detection and then show the results in my HTML page. So look how much faster here that we can actually like throw in this prompt, generate a detailed system, and now we have these two tasks running in parallel while we're installing the CLI tool. So if we just go back again, let's open up our terminal. It has now been installed. If you go back here, we can verify that we are good to go. So the version, and we have our coder. Now we can type in our message, we can build our systems as if you're doing, if you're using the CLI tool here or like the code editor directly. So this is pretty cool. Let's go back here and run some more examples for the YOLO usage. So right now we're just running through getting the detections that we want. So this is how we run the model. If you just comment this out, I'll show you how we can set the classes that we want to detect as well. So here we have an example where we can set the classes for our open vocabulary. It even came with a suggestion here. So we can set these classes that we want to detect. So we have the YOLO world model that we're initializing. This was also just coder directly out of the box, but let's just delete these and throw in our prompts. So here we have an example. Again, let's just do, let's maybe just do like backpacks. Let's see if there's any backpacks in the videos. Backpack people walking, we can rerun it down here in our terminal. So yolo world usage dot pi. Now we're detecting two backpacks in our image, nothing else. And this is just purely based on our prompt. We could do sunglasses. Now we get a backpack here as well. One guy standing with the backpack here. If you want higher accuracy, you can go with the larger yolo models, but this is pretty awesome. And you can see how fast it's even running. We can see it's around 100, 200, maybe 300 milliseconds. Some of them is lower depending on how many uh, detections we have. So around 100 milliseconds, 10 frames per second on a CPU. No training at all. We're just prompting it what we want to detect. 
So this could, for example, be weapons as well. Like if you want to build a security system, could be all different types of prompts that you throw into it. We can also just say a man wearing blue. Let's try to see if it's able to catch some of that. Looks a bit blue. He has blue jeans on. Some catches some white stuff here and there. This is definitely not a man. But also assigns very low confidence. This guy here, it looks a bit blue here, to be honest, in the lighting condition. So it, it should be white, but uh, it, it kind of looks like blue here and with very high confidence score. So you can you can prompt all different things. Like if you need really good accuracy, like you can go with the medium, large model as well. We can try to just see if there's any differences by running this medium model. It will download all of them automatically if you change the model. So it's very easy to run with as well. Now we're not getting any detections. We're not getting wrong detections on these guys. This guy is actually like wearing blue, uh, blue jeans, depending on what it's looking at. But now it definitely knows that the white shirts are not blue by just upgrading one model. So it depends on if you want to run real-time predictions, some easy cases like this is a pretty hard one as well. But if you just want to run the fastest inference as possible, tech people, you can probably get away with these models here or specific object which is pretty common so if we go back here again to our quest view so now I'll basically just hit go so now it's pretty much just going to we have to design it comes up with the plan it looks pretty good it's going to use some sql database it gave the follow-up questions where we can pretty much just um come up with what we want. If we want to use fast API, Flask, Django, Node.js, if you want to have direct the, the image upload, SQL database, no SQL database, JSON files, all these different things here. So I basically just told you to continue with the, it's probably just going to go with the simplest option, but you can do follow up questions here and answer the plan. So it pretty much just comes up with the solution that you want, but this is a pretty cool tool. Uh, when we're looking at it and this is how we can build like a software system around the models So I showed you how we can run the predictions how we can build a front-end and also a back-end around it Of course, you can get a way better front-end if you're using react or something But if you just want to get something quick up and running where you can see your models do actions, this is pretty cool So now it's going to update the plan. It will go into the actions I'll show you the final results, but this is very awesome in the upcoming videos We're going to see another model Definitely make sure subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for it. We also have this YOLO E. It's you can pretty much use it in the exact same way, but some of these here you can also get segmentation mask. So not only the update detection, but also instant segmentation. We can either have a reference image. We're going to dive into deeper how these models actually work, but you can have references. You can give it a single example. So for example, a visual prompt with a cross, cross image, it understands these umbrellas and then it finds them on the right side. You can have text prompts, visual prompts. Sometimes you can give it references as well. All these things we will cover in upcoming videos. Make sure to know that these tools here actually exist, how to use them, how to build software systems around it. This is all that I'm trying to do and also teach you guys. Check out the Autodesk channel as well. We're doing tons of videos in there covering every single step that you need in the computer vision pipeline as well, especially in the detection world. We can now see that our two task has been finished. So we can see we, have, we get a full task report here at the end with the summary, verification with a fast API server. We have a database where we can save our results into when we run inference with our model. API returns correct JSON response. It has also tested that out. And we also have our UI here. So you can see it has the front end UI, back end API server, and Jolo World model integration. It has done verification. Right now, we just want to create a very basic front end HTML. We can have a back backend Flask server running in this port here where the model is loaded. Then we just have an API endpoint detect responding to the request. We can upload JPEGs and PNG files. If you go back into our um, File Explorer again, we can see our coder has all these different requests where we can see our markdown files and our summaries for all the tasks that we were running in parallel. So now we have our full app here. We have our different runs. We have our static. So this will just be our HTML index page. So if we open that up, 
We can see we can upload and configure. We can select an image, the detection prompt we want to throw in, and then we can hit detect object and it will show the results in here. So this is pretty cool. Now we have ton more code in here and we also have our full app where we have our API. We have our detection. So this is what we're going to call if you want to extract your detections from our database. We have our schema. So this is our database schemas. We have our XY, we have a width and a height. We have our results, class labeled, confidence, bounding box. So this is all the base models that we want to have when we're creating our APIs for our model and also our database schemas. So this is pretty cool. This is how you can build like a full application around the YOLO models. We saw how we can use the YOLO world model, but also how we can take it to the next step and act like start to build some software systems. Make sure you're familiar with it. With this, it's much more than just running detection models because as you can see in the code, it's just a few lines of code and we have a detection model. So it's much more about the system around the models.